Dead Rising was originally released exclusively for the Xbox 360 in 2006. Possibly it came about out of a desire to create a new franchise for the first next-gen console of the time, except that Capcom aren't particularly good at coming up with new ideas these days, so it's likely some executive in a meeting just said, what if we did zombies again? Which, in fairness, is probably the sort of thing I'd have come up with as well if I was sitting on almost a decade's worth of zombie motion capture data. The game puts the player in the role of Frank West, a freelance photographer who knows guns, kung fu, and is a bit of a ladies' man. Look, after I'm through helping you, you and I are gonna have a nice little chat. You know, she's been cold while you've been talking to her this whole time, but I think that vague threat's really gonna seal the deal. This is a game that hasn't aged particularly well, with wonky controls, poor pacing, and some incredibly poor facial animation. Yeah, well, I'm freelance, pal. I don't make my living waiting for the TV to tell me what to cover. <laughs> <laughs> but following the successful Wii port of Resident Evil 4, Capcom decided, as it usually does, that the word exclusive doesn't actually have to mean anything if they don't want it to, resulting in the release of Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop for the Wii in 2009. The game has been given a drastic overhaul, to the point where it's almost not even the same game anymore, and most people hold this port in very low regard, mostly because the number of zombies on screen at a time has been drastically reduced, but it's not as bad as people think. There's still rather a lot of zombies on screen at a time, certainly enough to be menacing. It's a different experience from the constant crowd of zombies in the 360 version, but to be honest, I don't understand why this is the thing that people have chosen to focus on. I mean, there's so many other changes on the Wii version of this game, and yet people choose to get stressed out over the number of zombies on screen at a time. That's, I mean, that's stupid. You're stupid. You're a stupid person. And you know what we're gonna do, you and me, right now, is we're gonna educate your fucking ass. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you some information, some things that you should care about, some of the bigger changes, some of the important changes on this port of the game. That's why I do this show. So let's fucking educate your stupid face, dick. Fuck, fuck you, fuck. That felt like it was going to be good and then it just disintegrated. Say goodbye to photography mode. Frank West is a photojournalist. He's covered wars, you know. That means that, like Troy Wagner, he has a camera. And also like Troy Wagner, this allows him to photograph the atrocities he sees during his time in this zombie-infested heck hole, earning points depending on how gruesome, dramatic, or um, erotic the photos may be. Ah oh, damn, check out the gams on that dame! In the Wii version though, the camera stuff has been stripped out entirely. The only pictures Mr. West takes during the game are part of the narrative. No photography for you, friend. Hit the bench, 72 hour mode, you're outta here! The entire conceit of Dead Rising on the 360 is a race against time to rescue survivors and uncover the truth about the zombie outbreak before getting back onto the roof of the building in time to hop onto the helicopter and back to safety. You're constantly having to check your watch to find out how much time you have left. Not on the Wii version though, because there's absolutely no countdown timer, so you could conceivably take as much time as you like on your missions. You won't, of course, because the game places an emphasis on completing missions quickly and scoring as many points as you can while doing them, grading you on your performance at the end of the mission. Guns don't kill people. They kill zombies. The 360 version was all about hitting things with other things. Beams of wood, metal poles, baseball bats, crates, park benches, lawn mowers, you name it. You can still do this in the Wii version, but you're limited to holding just one melee weapon at a time. Instead, the game places heavy emphasis on firearms so you can get the most out of those sweet, sweet motion controls. Zombies even drop ammo when they die, just like in Resident Evil 4, so you're almost never going to run out of ammo for that shotgun. In fact, the game really wants you to shoot zombies, but it knows there aren't as many zombies here as there are on the 360, so the previously open sprawl of the Willamette Mall has been closed off a little with arbitrary barriers, blockades, and obstacles forcing you into narrow paths with groups of zombies, which I actually like. The wide open spaces on the 360 version look nice, but it's far too easy to avoid the zombies, which, you know, why, why bother allowing hundreds of zombies on screen at a time if I can walk past them all with ease? 
It does rather make that new subtitle a little misleading though, doesn't it? I mean, you're not actually going to be doing much in the way of actual chopping in this game. They should have called it... Um... Uh... That's good enough. These controls are, uh, n uh, n uh, nice. They're nicer. They're nicer than the 360 controls. I can't tell you just how much I love, love, love the controls in this version of the game. It's more or less identical to the controls for Resident Evil 4, which are natural and intuitive and friendly and gun pointy, compared with the controls to the 360 version, which are just weird. In the 360 version, you use the left trigger to aim Frank West's camera, the right trigger to aim his gun, and then you fire, or take a picture I guess, using the X button, which was fine in 2006, but gamers have spent the last six to eight years learning to use the trigger buttons to fire a weapon. So going back and playing this game now is, you know, it's not fun, it's not an enjoyable experience. The controls just haven't aged very well. The Wii version, by contrast, is just as slick and intuitive now as it was when the game came out in 2009. It's fun, it's a fun, enjoyable experience. Which brings me to my next point. I'm not doing the American, okay. It's, it's enjoyable, it's actually an enjoyable game. I mean, I, I enjoy it. You might think stripping out 72 hour mode, photography, and reducing the emphasis on melee combat would make the game worse, but you know what? I like it. In fact, I like Chop Till You Drop a lot more than the 360 version. Yes, okay, it doesn't look anywhere near as pretty, but it's a faster, more enjoyable arcade experience, a streamlined experience that cuts the boring stuff and lets you get on with what Dead Rising should really be all about, indiscriminately killing zombies in a shopping mall. Plus, it's generally kinder to the player, with more frequent saves, a reduced emphasis on the sadistic how the fuck do you kill this guy boss fights, and less of a time crunch. This version of the game has room to breathe, and it's all the better for it. There. Bet you didn't expect that, did you? No. Just because I review games on the internet and I occasionally get a little bit angry about this stuff doesn't mean I'm going to hate everything that I play, you know? I'm more than just this one-dimensional YouTube personality yelling at his television, okay? I read. I write poetry. Did you know I like cats? No. Because you never fucking ask, do you? That's where, that's all I'm doing from that. Um, there was more, I was gonna do more of a bit where I pretended to be um, like an upset lover, like we were in a relationship and I was gonna say, I'm gonna go to my mother's, but I really feel, I think that's too mean. I think that's taking it too far and I don't want to upset you. So I'm gonna stop, I'm stopping there and we'll be back next week with another episode. Um, but just like, don't, just like widen your expectations because people who review games on the internet, if you just want anger and if you just want to feed into that, then by all means, you know, fucking go for it. But you're gonna find, it really sours your experience uh, of, you know, digesting content on the internet and playing games as a whole because you're just going to be looking for something to be angry about. And I feel like there's more to games than that. Embrace the diversity of video games. Embrace the good and the bad. There's good stuff out there and there's bad stuff out there. And Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop has this reputation of being a piece of shit and it's not. It's great. I, I thought it was fucking marvellous. But you expected me to hate it. And that's it. That's where I'm leaving on this week, is that you're wrong. This, this whole episode is a critique of you as a human being. And I want you to reassess who you are and come back to next week's episode with a fresh perspective. Because you know what I'm doing next week? I'm doing the fucking Sims. The Sims on the Game Boy Advance. Chew on that, motherfucker. I'll see you in a week. I've covered wars, you know.